um, we weren't very happy with living in Barcelona anymore. Is it okay if um, I record this? So just make sure. Yeah, you're... sure. Don't worry. I, I won't say anything that I don't want anyone to know. <laughs> you didn't. You didn't. didn't you didn't <laughs> like Barcelona. Wow, Barcelona is one of my favorite cities. I love yeah, Barcelona. I love Barcelona as well. Um, was it the but, political tension? It was. It was the time around seven years ago. The whole of Spain really was was embroiled in corruption scandals. Mm. The politics was bad. The cost of living was rising. Salaries weren't. There was recession. It was it was just a bit depressing and um, and just things weren't looking as if they were going to get any better. And um, and then my wife wasn't happy as well. So and she basically said, "Look, why don't we?" If you find another job in another country, let's let's go for it. Um, is your wife Spanish or is she British? She's Spanish. Or she's Spanish from Catalonia. From no, from Galicia, mm -hmm. in the northwest of Spain. Un canto a Galicia, hey. <laughs> yeah. I love that song. Uh, Galicia is beautiful, a beautiful place as well. There's, um, it's very atypical. It's not. It's very unlike most of Spain. Um, the coast, they've got a coast there that's that's just sort of gorgeous and there's a beautiful um, city called Santiago de Compostela and uh, I in recommend the northwest. it. Northwest. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so just above the, Portugal. The pilgrimage and yeah, and they, they speak something more like Portuguese yeah. Spanish. Ga Gallego. Uh, or Galician, and it's it's in between Spanish and Portuguese. And in fact, when, when we cross, they're Celtic. Yeah, definitely. When we cross over into Galicia uh, from Galicia to Portugal, and my wife speaks uh, Gallego in Portugal, they comment, uh, they compliment her on her Portuguese. So it's that close to Portuguese. Oh, well, here's a question, Graham. Here, here's a question. Um, you know, there, there's, there's a thin line between a dialect and a language. It has to do with armies and navies and what, you know, and politics. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, one could say that, and I often do, that Spanish and Portuguese are dialects of modern Latin. And I'm just wondering uh, yeah. if you think that Gallego, I mean, it's all a matter of opinion, right? Where, where you draw that line between dialect and language. Uh, the languages, I, don't think really, I don't think languages really exist. Everything is a dialect. But do you think that, that the, the line between Gallego and Portuguese is just political? No, I don't think is so. Is it the same language, you know, with with some variation? No. From what I know, I, I don't speak either languages, but from what I know, there's there are clear differences. I think you're right. Of course, when there are clear this. differences between your, your English and mine, but we call them different yeah. dialects of English. Yeah. But I think I think there's sufficient differences for them to be language. But okay. I know what you mean. For example, I know that, for example, Catalan, there is another version of Catalan, which is Valenciano, which they speak in Valencia, um, just, just to the south of Catalonia. Now, um, there are some people a lot who I believe argue that that is a separate language, but really it's a dialect of Catalan. But um, you see, what, what is a language reason, is all a political. Well, it's concept. not just political. I think there are other differences, but for example, the, the, um, the EU, I think the EU constitution was translated into Catalan and then in Valencia. Valenciano. <laughs> well, in Valencia, they argued they needed a separate translation into Valenciano, and they did it, and there was only about, I'm, I'm going to get this wrong because it's been a long time since somebody told me this, but there's about 10 words difference 
between mm -hmm. ten, 10 differences between mm -hmm. the two. All political. Once the, once All political. the uh, why, why do we talk about Chinese? Translated. When Chinese, the Chineses are clearly different languages. They are not comprehensible from one to the other. Those people have to resort to writing in order to understand each other. Those are clearly different languages, and yet we call them all Chinese. Well, we yeah, call them Chinese politics. because they come from China, like India. Uh, India has 800 languages. Well, yeah. But I mean, when I was in graduate school, I think the most memorable thing that I ever was taught was a language is a dialect with an army and a navy. That has stuck with me all these years later that you know what what people that dialect is a put down i mean un, unless you're a linguist um it, it, if you want to insult speakers of a language you say oh it's only a dialect anyway but so yeah, i think language and culture definitely has a political aspect to it and is used by in politics but but i think it depends on I think there are distinctions between them. I don't, I don't know what the what a linguist would say would be a clear distinction, but I think you know Portuguese and Gallego are definitely different languages. There's enough difference. Okay, we could just substitute the word the, the dialect, and we would be in agreement. I mean, my question was, are they separate, or is it just political? And you're saying there there's enough of a difference between them. Yeah, I think so. I mean, oh, we I could know. also say that that um, Chaucer's English was a different language from what we speak because we can't understand that. Well, oh, but I can't. Yeah, but it, it, it <laughs> is. Well, I have considered. another question for you, Graham. So you, you were is, speaking just, Spanish just before, all we, finish, years, just before we finish that. I think Chaucer's English is a different English. Is a different language. It's it's yeah. called by a different name, Middle English. Yeah. Um, so you were living in Spain for many years, speaking Ceseo. Um, uh, as I learned when I was in the first grade, I, I had a Spanish class and we had a teacher who spoke Ceseo. So uno, dos, tres, cinco, seis. Um, but now you're living in Mexico where they speak Ceseo. So what do you speak? Are you, uh, are you switching uh, to Ceseo? What happened was I've had several changes. So seven years ago, I moved to Uruguay. Aha. Uh -huh. And I was in Uruguay for five years. So my Spanish changed differently because in Uruguay, they speak um, a different type of Spanish to Spain and a different type of Spanish to Mexico. There's a lot right. of, there's a lot of differences in the Americas, the way they speak yes. Spanish. Uh-huh. But they but um, none of them speak the Theo, I think. I think the, the biggest difference in Uruguay was the pronunciation of some of the words. So the um the let me think of the different so I'll I'll give you an example. I I lived on a street um that started with a double L. Um yeah, yeah in Spain that would be a J. Yeah. Um, so, double L? Uh, yeah. 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 Oh. So, Llanos. It's almost like in Spain it would be Llanos. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, in Uruguay it was Chanos, Chanos, Chanos. Hmm. With a shirt. Yeah, sign. And Ar Argentina would be Llanos. <laughs> yeah, well, Argentina and Uruguay, uh, they speak the same type of Spanish with really. um, um, I can't wait for Rita to show up if we can ask her if it's the <laughs> same or just similar. <laughs> well, yeah, it depends on who you, who you talk to, of course. There'll be distinctions. Uh, okay. She'll tell you that there's a, there's a lot of differences. There are differences in vocabulary between Argentinian and Uruguayan Spanish. And English. But, um, compared to the Spanish they speak in Spain or in Mexico, it's similar. Yeah. is what, I'm, what I mean. So what's been the most challenging part of switching into Mexican Spanish for you? Well, that the pronunciation, oh, the, in Mexico, no, I mean, it hasn't been, 
very challenging. I guess some of it's always the vocabulary. It's the the words that they use, the dialect, the the way, way they. So, for example, in in Mexico, when I first arrived, I remember thinking everybody's talking about their father. What is this? Because everybody was talking about padre. It's muy padre, padre, and it just means cool. And if you say something is padre, it's their slang is different. It just means it's cool. But I was like, I don't know why everybody's talking about their father. <laughs> ah. And they weren't. They were talking about how everything was, you know, went to the... And my, my wife joined me in my haircut. In the and they, were, they were all just talking about fathers and I'm like what, why are you talking about your father I, I, I wasn't really paying much attention uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, but uh, it was quite funny because that's the thing if you if you understand the word but you don't understand the context you're completely lost in a right. conversation in any language in any language yeah I remember when my my husband's parents came from Greece in 1984 and they lived with us for nine months. And I've taken Greek lessons, but they, I learned most of the Greek I know from law during that year, and then they came back later for three years. Now, it was kind of a, I don't even know how to, describe it, but my husband thought that maybe the etymology was from tipota, which means nothing. Um, and that when people said something deep, it sort of, it just kind of made an emphasis on everything to say that. And in the meantime, I'm just thinking D-E-E-P. Why are they saying this? Yeah, it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't the kind of Greek that was in my textbook that Hmm. I've had similar experiences in Arabic. Um, the word to well, eat in we Arabic. We know that there are lots of dialects of Arabic and not all. They're very similar to the, I, I guess, in principle to the ones in Spanish because uh, uh, the, the common words like water and bread, these are different in the different parts. So you have to pick up the the differences, uh, right, but you get those right away. Mm -hmm. you visit a new place. But when we used to visit people in the mountains, they would look at us and say, kill, kill. And we thought, hmm, and it, it turns out they're, they're telling us to eat, which is uckle, uckle, you know, so. <laughs> some, some people would say, chill, chill, because they, you know, that's the way they pronounce it. So it's uh... yeah. So what what language are you speaking now in Malaysia? I know there's a language called Malay, and are you having to learn that, or does everybody speak English? Or well, what's... Google Translator pretty much gets me through things that I need to know. I haven't really undertaken a study of it, but. Uh, um... Is that the language that surrounds you all the time when you go out? Yeah, yeah, uh, but but also they speak English. I mean, the way I well, I don't know. You, you can't really say that everybody speaks English sometimes, but um, uh, it's kind of like when I was living in Arabic countries. A lot of people got along quite well without learning any Arabic, and uh, a lot of times when I was visiting, uh, uh, going shopping in Arab countries, I would. If I was trying, when I was trying to learn Arabic, I would try speaking to them in Arabic, and they would speak to me in English. And yeah, that's very discouraging. It, it, not really, because it became a battle. So I would persist in Arabic, and pretty soon one of us would be defeated. So uh, <laughs> you know you're winning when okay they shift to Arabic, <laughs> but if they can dominate with English, well you you've lost. You have to just put up with that. So. Yeah. 
uh, it becomes a battle of, of whose fluency is greater, yeah. whose proficiency is yeah, higher. Whatever, whatever you can sort of fall into and communicate. So the French are famous for doing that as well. If they don't like your accent in French, they will they will switch to English. Yeah. It's kind of a put down. Mm, yeah. I've, Nobody I've, has to worry about that kind of put down in the United States. <laughs> and where? Everybody's going to speak here. Everybody's and nobody's going to try to speak a foreign language of you. Oh, they try at airports. They they line up in immigration and they and the immigration people they're very rude and they'll say, "Oh, speak English," you know. Or I think immigration people are rude everywhere. At oh, least my awful. my experience with them in France in the 70s. Um, it was the only time I ever felt discriminated against hmm. in three years. I think U.S. immigration can be really ruder than other countries because most countries will try to work with you, the immigration people. I very rarely have any problem. Here they just put you in a cage. Yeah, that's right. They stick you in a cage. <sighs> anyway. Take your kids from you and lock you up for an indeterminate time. Well, this is Trump's again, birthday. Things have got worse. Things have got worse, haven't they really? I, I was mean, just reading my, an article in the Washington Latin. Post about how um, this, this moment, you know, with the, the violent clearing of the nonviolent protesters from in front of the White House and the stupid photo op with the Bible, that that, may come to define Trump in a way that is not going to be good for him, which I hope because ever since 2016, I have watched this guy do really awful things. I mean, remember Helsinki? When he sucked up to Putin in such an obvious way? Oh, that, yeah. People just forget, but there are some things that people don't forget. And I'm hoping that this is going to be one of them, sticking the military on a bunch of American citizens. You know, he's going to try and fly his way out of it, but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that he can't. It's something that is very bewildering for a lot of, I guess, a lot of people who, who don't particularly know the United States. Like, like, like myself, I don't particularly know the United States very well. I've visited a couple of times. I've got friends and, and people I know who are from the States, but it's just uncomprehensible how that man how it was elected. Yeah, well... I mean, I'm guessing help. it's, with a little it's help the same... I'm she guessing it's the same for a lot, a lot of people... Hindering like yourselves as well, but but um, I don't know, maybe you have a better insight into it than, than people like, like me do. Well, we all woke up the day after the election stunned. I mean, unbelieving, because how could that have happened? You know, it was, it was a perfect storm of cheating and you know, some bad decisions on the part of the Clinton campaign. But anyway, it's not the first time the Republicans have stolen an election using the Electoral College, which basically depends on congressional, well, on districts. You know, the, the number of just our stupid system with the electoral college instead of the popular vote and the winner take all system. Mm -hmm. um, but then, then you had all this, all these lies circulating because of the Russians. Uh, a lot of people who, who really hated Hillary Clinton. I'm not going to speculate on why, but um, they kind of, they equated Trump and Clinton and they stayed home. You know, they didn't see that Trump was, you know, if Hillary Clinton was bad, 
which I don't think she was. I think she would have been a very good president, but in any case, she was not popular. She was a bad person. He was like a hundredfold that. This guy is a con man. It, oh. You could read so much about him, uh, but the tr trouble is the people who, um, his base, and then other other people, my uncle, uh, he's, he's the one in the family who, really a Trump supporter he you know he just didn't read because he he's in his 80s and he gets his news his news is pushed to him so he thinks he doesn't use internet all that well but he uses email and someone's got his email address and is pushing him this stuff that looks really cool and so he would forward it to me and I would say well you know I would uh, fact check this fact check that but he had no alternative, really. He had no way of. Uh, he didn't know how to fact check. Yeah, yeah. I see you both glob, glommed onto Glenn Kirchner. I'm really impressed with this guy. He's um, he does these uh, every day. I'm finding him on YouTube now. He's, he does his own show. I think it's called something like uh, oh, what's it called? Anyway. Um, what would it, it, you know, it's coming. Uh, salvation is coming, or something like that. Justice, justice is coming. Justice is coming. Thank you. So yeah, that's, that's that's the name of his uh, YouTube his YouTube efforts, and he is so coherent, and he's also uh, he has a good background in and what he's talking about, and he's what is he talking about. He, every day, oh, like today, uh, what Mike Pompeo is, uh, uh, several reasons why Mike Pompeo really, oh, what they're going to do is they're going to, um, the Republicans, oh, well, that's a, a different one, but anyway, it's, the Republicans have put out 50, uh, the, who's the head of the Republican, uh, Lindsey Graham? Was it Lindsey mm -hmm. Graham? Yeah, I don't, know. I don't know. Anyway, I can't remember if it was Lindsey Graham or if it was uh, the other one. Uh, there's good. so much turnover in the anyway, Republican Party. <laughs> somebody put out 50 subpoenas. And so his question was, is that the right thing to do? Second question, uh, should the people who were subpoenas come? And third, what's going to happen? So, Oh, these uh, were this, this was for the, the investigation into the Mueller Yes, that's right. That's right. The people they've subpoenaed are people uh, like James you know, Comey. Exactly. So his conclusion was that, uh, first of all, he thought that they would not dismiss their subpoenas as the Republicans did, as the people, as Trump's sycophants did. They just dismissed them and the, and the Democrats didn't pursue they didn't take him to court over it. They didn't because they wanted to cut through it. He figures they'll go and they'll run circles around uh, around the in, interlocutors. Uh, and uh, One that'll be really hmm? One can only hope. Yeah, really. But, but I mean, in that kind of situation, the the senators have a lot of power. They won't um, ask the questions. They spend a lot of time grandstanding. They ask the wrong questions. Yeah, yeah. They cut people off. They but still, he figures like these people are going to just make mincemeat of them. So, I hope so. He, he thinks that they'll go. So. He, he thinks that they will. If they get a subpoena, they're going to go because that's the right thing to do. I don't know. Well, I'll check out Glenn Kirshner, my, my go-to person every single day. If I only read one thing, it's Heather Cox Richardson. Who? She's a political historian, an American political Heather historian Cox mm -hmm. at Boston College. Mm -hmm. Although she's very, very careful always to say, I'm not speaking for my employer. Mm -hmm. And she started some months ago, I don't know how long, before the pandemic, writing a series of daily takes on the news called Letters from an American. Mm -hmm. They are so useful to me because she, she takes all these, you know, part of the problem 
is that there's so much happening every day that you can't you can't follow through. It's not one big story. It's you know they're masters of distraction. Something is happening, and then they do something awful. Yeah, it's a strategy. And, it's yes. strategy. and before you know it, you don't know what's going on. So what she does is she takes all the main stories of the day and she kind of summarizes them in a sentence or two. And then she tells you what the historical perspective is like, oh yeah, this happened in 1830. It was just exactly like this. Mm -hmm. And she kind of ties them together, shows how they're related and, and lets you know how yeah, we, we've had totally corrupt governments before. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. oh yeah. So she, overall, she's optimistic, which is something I I need to hear because if you if you get too pessimistic about this, you just throw up your hands and hide your head under a pillow. And I have to get out there and work to get Joe Biden elected. I can't lose hope. Mm -hmm. So I like the fact that she tries to end on a note of hope whenever possible. Uh, the historical perspective is just uh, so valuable because I don't know much about history in the sense that I've read some things that, you know, I took two years in high school of American history. That's it. Uh, I never took history in college. So she just has an amazing perspective and it gives her insights which she shares and the, the letters are not long you can read a letter in a few minutes um, you can find her yes i i subscribe to her on substack so her letters come to me in my email but you can also find the same things on facebook and twice a week she does facebook live uh, Graham, somebody uh, mentioned to me a, a, a British counterpart. His name is Jacob Rees Moog. Are you familiar with this person? Oh, can you write that in the chat? Yeah, let me. I think Graham froze. Or at least he froze on my computer. Has he frozen on yours too? Or is it just me? Because everybody's frozen. So Have for Heather, I feel like I'm on a first name basis with her. Um, if I don't have time to read the Washington Post or watch the P PBS News Hour, I have to read Heather. Yeah. Graham, did you get that? Uh, yeah, but you mean the the conservative MP? Yes. What's his name? Jacob Rees Mogg. Mogg, M O G G. Yeah. M -O -G -G. So I'd never heard of him. Have you ever heard of Jacob Rees Mogg, Nina? I never have. Yeah, I hadn't heard of him either. A friend of mine pointed him out to me, and so I went on Wikipedia and I looked him up. Is he of any interest to you, Graham? Not really. <laughs> any significance? <laughs> Why is he of interest to you, Vance? Yeah, uh, what, 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 um, what, why, why, do you, why are you interested in him? Okay, well, <laughs> my friend, who actually he's an Arabist and uh, used to be the director of the language center that I was in at Salt Lake University. Uh, with, with, and that stunt I pulled with uh, holding a book up like Trump did, um, he was one of the comments, he, he wrote in the commentary, uh, that um, basically the, in the conversation that was ensuing, uh, he said, I, uh, I mentioned that Trump, he said that anyway, Trump had a lot to do with, similar to, Bor he, he said, I said that they had their own problems with Boris and, uh, and Brexit. And he said, well, Boris is um, a tad more intelligent than Trump. And I wrote back and said, a little more intelligent that's a real insult you know uh <laughs> i mean you know, that's, a, that's the worst thing you can say about anybody you could say they were less intelligent trump but then you wouldn't be talking about anybody you could you know 
put more than three words together. But anyway, he then he he said, uh, I I don't know, I can't remember exactly why he mentioned this guy, but uh, I'd never heard of him, and so I looked him up because I don't know. And and when I when I looked up, it said that he was uh, that people found him entertaining. He was a uh, an anachronistic but and then known as uh, stuck in his uh in his um how would you say his approach to the world and but entertaining people found him entertaining do you find him entertaining graham no i find them very irritating <laughs> <laughs> kind of like nigel farage is yeah how would you how would you compare um, him with nigel farage let's not go there <laughs> Well, I was yeah, just trying we to really look, we can find bring you into the conversation in every, in every country. Yeah. It's not all that common to have them, you know, occupying the you know, the top spot like we have them here. What a shame! And I mean, shame. Yeah, the world has changed. Yeah, it really has, and the you know, when you really think about it. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm right. stuck where I am. I can't go anywhere. Um, I can. How do you mean, uh, how do you mean you're stuck? Uh, until the 10th, this is a few days ago, uh, we were unable to cross state, that is Malaysian state lines. So right. everybody was kept isolated. Each state was kept isolated from one another. And I'm on an island. So, um, but now the borders the international borders are still closed if i were to leave if i were to go to another country i might not be able to get back it would just depend on you know what was going on at the time yeah. they had a second wave that i could just be... got a message from birgit ferran speaking of spain mm -hmm. i presume she's still there she wanted to know the password so mm -hmm. Um, she, she said, can those of us on Facebook get the password to join the Zoom meeting? No, they can't. Because <laughs> no. I gave her the password. It's like, it's like but, an escape. It's like an escape room, but you have but to. Uh, did you put the link when up you there? In. The link. The clues the link. are there. The clues are there. Yes. But you are. might have to go to another website to be able to you get the password. It says. It says for more information, go to these other websites. That's where you find, it's in two places. Yeah. It's at the Talon website and it's also at, um, at the learningtogether.net. Learning I'm learning together. I'm going to give her that. Is it's WIA12. Yeah, I gave it to her. We're streaming on Facebook now. Zoom Bombers, WIA12. That's what we're, <laughs> that's where we are that? now. In fact, I, I would welcome just, the Zoom Bomber right now. Well, I can, I can bring, I can bring one into the, uh, into the room. That you could, I'm... you could, yes. There we go. All right. <laughs> okay. It's uh, kind of funny so... that that. Uh, so here's Birgit on Facebook watching the, the thing, and she messages me. <laughs> mm -hmm. She messaged me as well. I've just seen oh, okay. it. I didn't see it. Okay. I wasn't monitoring Facebook. But. I haven't looked actually. Yeah. You mean Vance, you, you have not been totally on top of every single piece of technology on your desk there. Uh, yeah. I'm uh, sure. Let's see. Uh, Birgit. No, I see. Yes. She has a friend of mine. Uh, Chris Fry. Chris Fry. Um, Chris Fry, if you're, if you're watching. I know how they feel. When, you can't get in the meeting. You know, when, when you can't get in and, and you're knocking on every door that you know. <laughs> okay. Well, I I, yeah, I remember one, one Sunday I was trying to get in, but because my Zoom name had something different other than my name, fans wouldn't let me in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's strict, strict security proto protocols in place. Well, yeah, which one was that? Was it... Uh... Yeah, we, we were, I was, especially, were you in the Nick Peachy presentation? Were you in that uh, one? No, I wasn't. Zoom -bombed presentation. That, that was Zoom Bomb, is that right? Yeah, that was Zoom Bomb. And also, there's one that TESOL just did that uh, they announced it on uh, 
one of their uh, on the T my TESOL lounge, one of their communities of practice. And um, let's see, where did I put this in? No. Where did I... I think that hmm. the key is to if everybody is muted when they come in and there's a waiting room and then you only open up everybody's mics at the end, no Zoom bomber is going to wait 45 minutes to get their opportunity to, to Zoom bomb. But well, the, the one that was bombed... The point is the chat. The one that was bombed like, at I just invi at invited end. about 40 of my first and second and third cousins to meet with me on Monday night. I mean, I don't want to mute them. I want to hear oh, them no. talk. Of course not, but I'm talking about uh, presentations and stuff, which oh, yeah. is normally... Yeah, it's normally what are targeted either. Right. Well, those classes. I, it, it seems like some people know how to mute all everybody and other people get confused and they let you. Mute well, you yourself. need to be the host. If you're the host, you can mute all. OK, so um, now, now Birgit is saying it says locked by host. Oh, what is it? So where is where is that? Vance, yes. must have, Vance must have locked the room. Hang on a minute. You know, maybe it happened when I was ejected from the room. Let's see, security. I've just I've unlocked security. the meeting now. No, it's not locked. Because I've it, just unlocked it. You've just unlocked it. So it was yeah, locked. It was locked. Oh, it was locked. Okay, that explains why nobody was here. <laughs> but I got in. Yeah. No, I think it, it must happened. Have locked. You must have locked it. Or oh, it must be on automatic lock, maybe, after a certain time? No, no. It's never happened before, but I think at one point I got disconnected. When I came back in, I found different settings. So oh, okay. I think maybe it happened then. Here comes Michael Birch is coming. I'm admitting him. Chris is, I'm admitting. Oh, what a, what a shame. So sad. <laughs> Hello, Michael. Hello. Um, Hello, Vance. Hello, Chris. Graham. Hello, Sorry, Chris. we're we're, work, we're trying to work out what happened with the I, lock. I guess you had um, lock automatically when meeting starts. No, I've never said that. I don't think so. And, uh, but you know, I, I got ejected from the meeting some time ago, and and then was brought back. Not and, to worry. <laughs> you know, so it's Graham's fault because he was co-host, so he he didn't check. <laughs> Uh, you're blaming me. I might have to go into my uh, <laughs> mask back on. <laughs> Zoom bomber mode now. Yeah. I don't see Birgit. Okay, Graham, you, you have to speak. How to are us. you, Michael? No. How are you, I'm Michael? Well. Okay? I'm well, thank you. And you? So, um, I see you. You've joined the. Michael's just joined another another group that. Um, that is really interesting, actually, that some of you might be interested in ludic language pedagogy. Ludic? Ludic, ludic? language oh, yes. pedagogy. What's that? Yep. It's all about a group of a group of educators who are interested in using games um, and researching games. Ludic? Michael York. Uh, just a moment. Michael York. Yeah. Exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, it's a very active community, and some very interesting stuff gets shared there. Hmm. I'll um I'll put the link in. Hmm. Some, if you're interested, then uh, sure. It's a lot of theory. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Um, fans. Birgit says someone needs to let me in. I think there's a waiting room. Oh, she's on an iPhone probably. This is where the Zoom bomber appears. <laughs> okay, I'm letting in I <laughs> iPhone. All right, here comes the iPhone. If we get Zoom bombed, we're just going to enjoy it. But see, <laughs> I have ways now of getting rid of them. First of all, I've got it set where if I eject someone, they can't get back in. So if someone, that's the first thing I, I can right, do. Right, that and you secondly, have to do in your main setting. No one, no one asks for a screen, but if someone tries to share a screen, then I can grab the share. Maybe just to, to thwart that, I'll allow screen sharing. This is inviting the zoom, boom, zoom bar. So that's one way that they can do it. And they can also get at the whiteboard. So I think I've 
I, I think the whiteboard is not available. I think I've made it unavailable. So, but if, if a Zoom bomber were to uh, share a screen, some lewd picture or something like that, I could share a screen and then um, they wouldn't be able to overcome that because only I can take over screen share or, or and Graham as well since he's co-host. We can, we can kick them out as well. Kick them out, that's not, not a problem because I've got it set where if we kick them out, they can't get back in. And then what we did with Graham, I didn't know about that setting uh, when, uh, not Graham, sorry, Nick, with Nick uh, Peachy, uh, I had set up the waiting room. So I basically just moved them up to the waiting room and quarantined them that way. Um, yeah. It would have been better if I could have just ejected them. So we have a mystery iPhone, unless that is... It, um, it's Birgit, I asked we're hoping her if it's she's Birgit. iPhone, she says yes. Oh yeah, I was wondering whether it was the second Chris Fry. So it could be. Going for lunch already. No, it, it's me. It's there she is. Birgit. Hi, oh. Birgit. Hi. <laughs> oh, it's good to see you, Birgit. Sorry about that. It's okay. I see you've, I see you've changed your name to iPhone. Mm -hmm. It's because instead of logging in with my computer, because I had my computer on Facebook, and then instead of logging on with the computer, I logged on with the phone. No problem. <laughs> or, or is your participation here sponsored by Apple? That's right. <laughs> yeah. So if if this were a an important webinar, you know, it was just got me and Graham and Michael and Nina and Birgit, not important. But if it were an important webinar, we, I wouldn't let you in because you'd have to change your name. I think you can do that though. So, but anyway, that, yeah. because it's really dangerous to let people in. I guess she's trying to do that. It doesn't really matter at this point. It's okay. Says I mean, you're here, you're identified. We know who you are. It's not a problem. But you know, Zoom bombers will sometimes come in under, well, they just, they just don't, uh, it's, it's a risk letting them in. Except we had a communication going with you on Facebook. So you have to be prejudicial against people called John Smith. Could be. <laughs> when, when we got bombed at Nick Peachy's presentation, we had two Nick Peachy's in the room. <laughs> and Nick pointed it out. He said, there's another Nick Peachy over there. And oh, okay, waiting room. <laughs> yeah, I've heard, I've heard they come in as the speaker with yeah. the speaker's name yeah. to make things, because then when there's a chance that you kick out the speaker <laughs> if you're trying to get yeah. rid of them. Well, it was an interesting experience and we managed to contain it and deal with it. And, uh, and also it happened, unfortunately, I, I might say before we start recording, it would have been really interesting to have a recording of it. But uh, uh, we had just started and they and it hadn't started the recording so basically we we got delayed for 10 minutes while we dealt with the chaos and then it finally became unchaotic and we and nick what, started talking what form what form did it take oh, i was uh pornographic verbal was it verbal was it no visual uh, visual movie. all right yeah, uh, movies of intercourse Oh, right. Okay. So the person had access to screen sharing because you could, yes. you should, you can turn that off. Imagine how awful it would be if you were trying to teach a group of elementary school students and somebody mm. did that. Yeah. Yeah. Does yeah. Anybody... yeah. That's, that's why really you've got enough controls to turn all that stuff off. You do. Especially but you students. have to know to do it. And yes. I'm just yeah. thinking of all, all the teachers that were thrown into online teaching with no preparation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's and one of the things that they should have had as a standard. You know, you can't use a tool without knowing how to use it, really. Or, well, you or, can. Right? Well, you can, but, yes. but um, you, especially if you're teaching young learners, then you really need to have had someone show you how to prevent But that. things happen so fast that people aren't really doing that, you know? And well, pe people had time enough to be introduced to the tools, so they had time enough to be shown the security controls, is it's my life. hard to say that, you know, I mean, because I know places I've worked, things are 
just so busy and chaotic, you know, uh, it's hard. Yeah, but you need, you, if you're teaching young learners, if you're teaching children, you need to make that a priority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You really do. You, you can't throw someone into a room without proper training, without proper, proper consideration, because it could change someone's life forever. It could change wow. a young person's life forever. You really need to take it, take it seriously. Um, I think that teachers took it seriously, but I think they were probably overwhelmed. I think, I mean, a lot of schools used Zoom. Mm. And, you know, then other schools... Well, Zoom, Canvas, Zoom has think, proper controls, and it had them as well. They, but they it, did, it did have... The, I, I find the controls confusing because you have to set some of them up before you ever schedule a meeting and then you can undo yeah. some of them but not all of them so if you haven't done it very much i th i think that it's it's easy to make a mistake mm. yeah it's, it's easy. it is easy to make a mistake but um what what i think is a very important is that if you're teaching children in particular, mm. you really need to know how what the controls are and how to make mm. to safeguard sure. the children. Right. Yeah. That's really yeah. important. No, I mean, I, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just mm. trying to. Um, Looks like just, we just try, trying to say that I understand when it you know if it didn't go optimally for everybody. It's it's one of those. Yeah, I know I know why it happened, but I'm saying what it shouldn't have happened. Right. It should, so much right. of it shouldn't have happened. The so local community college here has you really class. need to have, you know, you need to have safeguarding as a as a priority if you're teaching young right. people. Yeah. Well, not even talking about safeguarding, but the local community college here has has a small department called the Challenge Program for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Um, and the, the whole college went online. And so they went online. I was looking at some of these offerings for the summer with my daughter in mind. And I, I couldn't quite understand what they were doing. The woman in charge of the program in response to a question I asked, I, I said, is it synchronous or asynchronous? I couldn't figure that out. And she said, oh, it's synchronous. It's exactly the same as if you were going to the class and i thought whoa that's like the first thing that you can't do in online teaching is sit people down for an hour and a half and talk at them because nobody's going to tolerate that no but i don't think you know i think they just they don't know they don't know that you you have to do this in little segments and it's good to make it available asynchronously and Anyway, so it's not just for safety features. That oh yeah, the, there's so doing. much. There's so much you have to take into consideration, which I think you know people will learn, and that takes time. But yeah. I think if, one of the things I really feel strongly about is if you're teaching children, then you really need to focus on the security before you even start. Yeah, because it can have devastating effects on on them if if you don't. It can really negatively affect affect them if something really bad happens, as mm -hmm. has happened. Yeah, I think it's but, it's all about duty of care. If you're teaching children, that's one of the things you shouldn't be let into a into a Zoom room as a host, as a teacher, without proper training or consideration and understanding the risks. You know, when well, we, when the, we first the way started, it happened here, nobody had more than a week, I think. I mean, the kids were out of school already, and the teachers, you know, the school systems were really scrambling. You know, what platform are we going to use? How are we going to do this? How does it work? Um, yeah, but I think if if that's all an part of you know, Donald Trump ignoring the pandemic until it was already here and had taken hold. But part of the problem is, it's if an organization doesn't take child protection or safeguarding seriously anyway, or not as seriously as they should, and they don't have something in place anyway as they should, 
that's when you have problems. If, if child protection is already uh, up there as being an important thing, a consideration in an organization, school, district, whatever, then that is something that will be implemented. An analogy, an analogy situation is when we've, uh, if, if you don't put seat belts on kids, that can impact their lives. And when we used to drive cars, when they were first invented, we didn't even have, well, not first invented. I mean, I'm talking about when I was uh, a young person, people didn't wear seat belts because they weren't in the cars. You know, right. you, they didn't come with seat belts. Yeah. It took a while for people to understand that even though it's going to badly impact someone, if they don't wear a seat belt, it could Influ it could impact or, or cost them their lives. Uh, oh, yeah. Were, I remember driving around like that. I and, remember family holidays where sometimes, you know, I was, sit I was sitting on my mother's lap in the front of a car yeah. without a seatbelt. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so well, people well, become aware. Well, what's, yeah, well, become my, aware. My daughter was born in 1992 and when we went to Greece with her, she was two or three, or we went both of those years. And I remember we, we took a cab from Athens to Carpenisi, where we have a house, and the cab had removed the seat belt. <laughs> so here I was with this toddler, and there was yeah. no way to belt her in. Uh, yes. I think, I think been, Michael, Michael wants to say I've something. been in cars. Yeah. I've been in like cars to, over the last couple of years that haven't had seatbelts. I'd like to distribute yeah. the conversation a little bit. What, what, what I was intrigued by is why does all the bombing take place on Zoom and not other platforms? Has anybody had any bombing on any other platform? Because it, it, does, it does happen on uh, other platforms. Because it's they, just, they don't seem to me any more secure. I've joined many meetings. They're before. not. In, and um, in fact, they're less secure. The yeah. thing is... Zoom is now more secure because it's been, it has had all the negative press. Uh, yep. But Microsoft and so is completely unsecure. I suppose the Mic difference is they, they yeah. never claimed then to end encryption. For work, for work, I use Microsoft Teams and it's not mm. as secure as, as Zoom. Oh, I not bet it's secure. dinner time. Hi, uh, Bobby. Hi. Uh, yeah. yeah. Dinner getting cold? <laughs> she has to Bobby. Come. Grab Vance was saying system. that um, Vance was saying that he's, it's about time he had another haircut, a bit like mine. <laughs> I need it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah get, get rid of all of it. <laughs> I'm not going to yeah. send him to the barbers. I'm just going to trim it. <laughs> in, my, in my sleep. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we don't have uh, open barbers here in the UK, not yet. Listen, listen. I, I would like to say just one thing, and that is that uh, I put in the in the text chat, and we talked about this last week. I put a a. Google Doc link in which uh, what I did is I took all my Zoom controls and I worked with Heike Philp on this and uh, she had a way of approaching it. There's a link to her document as well there in the in that uh, Google Doc and uh, that shows all the controls that you have to set before you uh, do your meeting and after your meeting and annotates what you need to do. Now, because of the Zoom bombing incident on in TESOL, which is coming up on the uh, on the the community chat, I'd like this coming week to uh, I'm going to offer to do this on the TESOL forums to give a an exp to have a little webinar just you know, for an hour to explain that document. And uh, because I've been working with Heike, I was going to ask her, I thought she might come tonight, and I was going to ask her if uh, she would like to go in with me. But if anybody else would, um, I, I would say not tomorrow, but Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, something like that. I'd like to, about this time, maybe a little bit, maybe 9 o'clock, because 9 o'clock, uh, they tend to have their uh, webinars at 9 o'clock in the morning, which is 9 o'clock at night where I am, and which is actually right at this time. So. Um, Anyway, I'm going to set one of those up, and uh, I'll propose it for uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe Wednesday. Let's take Wednesday. Uh, I'll check and see if there are any other competing webinars. And um, if anybody would like to join me, you're quite welcome. If anybody would like, to, I don't know, uh, anybody, Graham, you're, you're, you're kind of 
seem to know about this, but then on the other hand, you're very busy. So my my problem th this is perfect for me because it's a Sunday mm -hmm. um, and seven a.m. to eight a.m. Mm -hmm. My problem is 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 that because of what's happening, I go most, days, most days at this time I'm actually in a meeting or something. Oh yeah, okay. Well, yeah, no problem. So uh, I'll just do it. I'll ask Heike if she'll, she still wants to do it. But because it's timely, because they, they're really thinking about how yeah. to, And also I've been thinking to do it as a webinar too, so I can get a recording of it so that we could show Good people. Idea. So so that's what I'm planning to do. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and announce it. And if anybody wants to attend, they can. And if not, you can just see the recording. So Why is Tisol doing webinars now? Well, I guess they're doing it because they had to stop the they conference. They canceled the convention. And they have a conference in, in July. They're having, they do? Yeah. And it they costs have not a member of TESOL anymore. Yeah, but then it's $150 for you because you're not a member of TESOL. If you're a member of TESOL, it's only $100. So if you have that kind of money and you want to... <laughs> I, I, let, I let my membership lapse for a reason. Yeah. Not a teacher anymore. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I'm retired too, but I still teach uh, when anybody wants to. I when respect it. that, but I'm an activist. I have a new, I have a new personality. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. I mean, you're you're I'm doing trying to save the liking. world here. Mm -hmm. Save um, the world from Donald Trump. Yes, Graham. Please, please. I'm please, I'm doing please. everything I can, Graham. <laughs> Well, save us. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. My, and my so many more people way. do as well, I'm sure. Okay, I'm going to do an outro because as you saw, my wife was here and I have only five minutes before the food gets poured on my head. So, <laughs> <laughs> spaghetti noodles, you know. Blah, blah, blah. Um, anyway, this is uh, the, the 14th of June. 2020, and these nice people are Michael Birch and um, in, in uh, okay, sorry, you didn't change your name. In, tell I, me. Huh? <laughs> I'm Gergit. I'm from Barcelona, Gergit. and Gergit. I'm on my cell phone. I mean, I, I have my name on my on my computer account, but not on no my worries, cell phone. No worries. No worries. We didn't mean to embarrass you. Just that. No, um, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Gergit. Okay. So maybe and next then, time I can, yeah, maybe next time I'll be able to like get in earlier and then I can like take no part worries. in that conversation. No, you're welcome anytime. There's no problem. This is it. If we, if, so, and, so if you're and Graham, like I told you we, in Messenger, if you go to learningtogether.net, uh -huh. there's always the link and the new password because the password changes every week. If you okay. go to learningtogether.net, you'll have to click on about and find the, um, the, the upcoming schedule. It would be there, but so it's in learning together. I just works. Um, on the thing that says link to our next event. Yeah, learning together. works. com. And Graham was here earlier. I don't know where's Graham go. <laughs> Webhead Hulk. Webhead Hulk is here. Graham, do you want to do you want to uh, say something to us? And I'll make a screenshot with Webhead Hulk. That'd be so cool. Um. Oh. Ma'am, I would think you, like you should turn say? yourself into, an, into a cat again. Well, okay. uh, I do have another mask, actually, that is a bit weird, but it's the closest to a cat that I have. Oh, uh, great. Okay. The no Cheshire longer... cat. Yeah. But because the eyes are where my mouth is supposed to be, it only works if you do that, really. That's all I suppose. <laughs> if I put a hat on, it would work, wouldn't it? Green hat. <laughs> okay. If you if you manage oh, to get the screen, great. Graham, we're going to give you we're going to your webhead Hulk and go ahead, go for it, Graham. Introduce yourself. Um, I'm no longer webhead Hulk though, Vanson. Webhead Cheshire Cat. Okay. Well, it <laughs> says you're webhead you Hulk. So webhead Hulk, you are. Or if you want to be Webhead Hulk, you could be Webhead Hulk. But anyway, that's okay. I got Webhead, Webhead Hulk is here. Okay, but thank you for all your different guises. It's always fun interacting with Graham. So this is uh, Talon event number 26. 
and it's uh, Learning Together, episode 472. Wow, they just come and they keep going. Webhead Cheshire Cat, even better. I don't know. Graham, you want to try that one? Hello, I'm Webhead Cheshire Cat. Excellent. Okay. Oh, that's, that's how nice. Okay, so I just made a, a screenshot, and I'll see if I can get it into paint. <sighs> how much fun we keep having here. Okay. So anyway, well, thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Oh, I mentioned, speaking of uh, Jurgit and uh, Barcelona, Chris Fry was mm -hmm. here a moment ago. Yeah, I know. I know, Chris. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I just and, wanted to mention. And I know, Graham, I know Graham from when he was in Barcelona. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I was in Barcelona, yeah. too, but I didn't meet you there. I was, I was oh, you were actually working Chris. in Barcelona, too? Really? Not uh -huh. working there. I just visited Chris at the British Council. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have never I been to Barcelona. Oh, you're missing something. I've never been to Spain. Oh, yeah. Look, oh, if you, really? if you oh. come, I, I mean, if you come, you could stay with me. Oh, um, thank I'm, you, I'm very actually, good. I'm actually from uh, Bethesda. So I'm actually I remember. From, I remember that, remember that you know my niece. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I've been kind of the, out of it. I'm coming. I'm coming. Sorry. She just came in with the noodles. Sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, okay. Well, that's Actually, we have a strategy now, Vance. We have a strategy, Vance. Strategy? What? To keep you on, to keep you online as long as we can, so we see those noodles on oh, your head. Oh no, 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 no! I've got to stop the recording. Goodbye, everybody.